My name is Latavia Carroll. I'm a senior here at Emory, and I'm also an environmental studies major. And today I'll be talking to you about dragon's, dragon's blood or croton literally. And I also brought like in a little um, sample for everybody, so feel free to give yourself a little drop on the hand and rub it to see if it turns white to see if it's real. So I don't want to <laughs> and smell it too. It has an interesting smell. Um, some common names it goes by is uh, sang Sangri de Guado or Sangri de Drago. So those are some interesting names. Also, um, there are 750 uh, species within the uh, genus uh, Croton. And it's also known as the pioneer species. It, um, it's usually found along the roadsides and it also is uh, one of the first plants that's found or, um, in areas where like land has been cleared or whatnot. And um, so an overview of what we're going to be talking about is um, what it looks like, where it comes from, uh, its traditional uses, its uh, phytochemistry, its biological activity, um, some clinical studies it's involved in, um, the dangers associated with its use, and also um, some current allopathic and CAM therapy uses. All right, it grows in wet and humid environment, and as you can see on the map, I kind of did that little circle myself. Well, not really a circle, but um, it's found in Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, even in Mexico. And as I mentioned earlier, it's found different uh, species are found all over the world. It grows to 10 to 20 meters um, tall, it's a tree, and uh, it's usually 30 centimeters in diameter. And if we go back to the first picture, you can kind of see that the leaves are heart-shaped, and the flowers are uh, greenish-white. It grows on these long stalks. And when the tree is slashed or cut, you can see that the uh, red sap comes out. Some traditional uses is, um, there, there, there are a lot, but I'm just listing some. Uh, diarrhea, cholera, hives, wound healing, insect bites, stings. Also in African um, American folk magic or voodoo, it's used for like mojo hands for money drawing or love drawing. And um, the traditional dosage was taking five to ten drops for one to two times a day. Usually for five days, it could go up to three weeks, and it's usually um, dropped into water, cold or warm, or into milk. And this is just a picture of the one with the loon, but yeah. <laughs> um, the chemistry, it um, is mostly, it has a lot of different chemicals in it. I just didn't feel the need to like list all of them. But some big uh, main groups are the alkaloids, the ligands, the uh, paranthocyanidins, the steroids, and the uh, diterpenes. And the first three are, uh, make up 90% of its dry weight, and also they are responsible for its wound healing. And um, testing is like the, the main constituent in it, and um, that a study was done on it that um, showed it had potent uh, cytotoxicity against KB cells or human oral uh, epidermal uh, carcinoma. So it inhibited, inhibited tumor growth cell, I mean, yeah, tumor cell growth. Uh, but the mechanism of action was unknown. Though, so. And that's a, a picture of it. For the biological activity, I just put a, a few up, um, but I wanted to talk about the SP303. It's a polyphenol that's um, extract from the um, sap. And um, it was in a study, it was um, shown to have antiviral uh, activity against the herpes um, simplex viruses, one and two. Um, it inhibited the thymidine uh, kin kinase mutants of the virus, and um, so that, that's pretty interesting. And then um, in another study with the gastro smooth muscles, it was shown to increase contractile tension um, in cells that were like taking from uh, mice. Or, and also the mechanism of action was unknown for that too. And then also in um, these studies, um, there's also, it's, it's showing these activities, but it's, it's not, 
they don't really understand which compounds are responsible for doing the activity. So that's another reason why. Um, clinical studies, two drugs I wanted to look at, look at were uh, Provir and Clofelomir. Provir is, um, was used for the traveler's diarrhea um, in a study from people who travel, well, U.S. citizens who traveled to Jamaica and Mexico. And it was looking at um, the effectiveness of three doses of Provir given to the, um, the participants. And the optimum dosage was 125 to 250 milligrams for four times a day for two days. And this showed to um, shorten the duration of the diarrhea. And the mechanism, mechanism of action is an inhibitor um, of intestinal chloride channels. And then crofelomere um, also is used for diarrhea, uh, but it's used for different types, like acute um, infections that are associated with like cholera, um, chronic diarrhea related to HIV AIDS, and diarrhea predominant irritable bowel syndrome. And um, its me mechanism of action was to inhibit one or more of like the trans transporters involved in transcellular chloride secretion, like um, the sodium potassium pumps. And that's a picture of it. Um, some dangers with its use is because of the toxicity of testing. If it's, um, if like a product has a high concentration of it, it's usually um, recommended that a person does not take it for wound healing or internal use. Um, but it's generally considered non-toxic. It was well tolerated in the clinical studies. But there was a study done in 2011 um, that had a brine shrimp assay. It was to test the toxicity of different plants. And it determined that in water, it was um, like aqueous type solution, it was not toxic, but in ethanol it was. So, and also there's no research on the effect of pregnant and lacti lactating wi women, even though traditionally it was used um, for like childbirth, after childbirth, or as a, a vaginal douche or whatnot. And also these are the picture of the little fruits. They're like three capsule, capsulated. I know it's just like awkward sitting there, but. Um, some current allopathic or CAM therapies. Um, there was a study that looked at the Zanguardo bug bite bomb. It had 1% of uh, proton literally, I guess, extract in it. And it looked at um, 10 workers in, from this pest control company took it uh, to put on ant bites. And um, it just showed that they had relief less than two minutes and that um, it inhibited the nerve afferent activity. And also with the Shaman Pharmaceutical, it was founded in um, 1989 by Lisa Connett, I think I said that right, um, and she's the CEO. And um, it was, they were actually the ones who created um, Provir, which was originally used for a respiratory virus, uh, well, potential treatment for that. But then they, when scientists saw that it was used for a cholera outbreak in 1993 in Peru, they switched it over to um, the diarrhea. And um, also another drug that they were working on was uh, Viren. It was a topical um, formation of Provir, but this died in phase three of trials. And also Shaman went bankrupt, and, um, and then it was later bought by NAPO. Um, Pharmaceuticals, which is now their trade drug is, or their leading drug is uh, crofelomere, and Lisa um, kind of is still the CEO of NAPO. So just in conclusion, it's a beneficial medicinal plant. Um, it has multiple properties. I didn't list all of them, but some others are um, antimicrobial, antioxidant, um, and different things like that. It's non-toxic. It has multiple um, uses and there's a bright future as more research is done.